Yeah. Over the time, uh, even though Gautama, the Buddha, uh, was one of the pioneers in understanding the natural flow of the mind, after that, lots of masters are there, they speak in their own language, and lots of uh, people who search, who have the search, they come around him and try to understand. So my question is, uh, why is it, even though the truth is the same, understanding is the same, and you actually have put it very simply, uh, the thinking, fighting with the thoughts, Muran Padadale is the root cause of all this problem, and we have to understand it. If it is so simple, why is that there are so many paths, so many teachers giving so many techniques, so many practices, and all this? What is the reason here? There are so many techniques, so many masters, and sometimes they even fight with each other that my technique is better, your technique is better. What is the reason? Originally, everybody is wants to. Uh, everybody wants to communicate what he is, what he has understood. He has no idea of fighting of anything. There is no idea of control, uh, creating any controversy with the other people. He wants to communicate what he has understood. So that alone, uh, everybody, uh, everybody is sincere. There is no uh, wrong activity, wrong approach. They are honest. Everybody is honest. So, but the but they may say something which should be the listeners. Uh, perhaps, uh, but even though Buddha teaches in a different language, uh, some way or other he has to say something against the old scriptures, old scriptures, because then only. The new approach can be taken into account. For that reason alone, he criticizes and deviates the old approach, the scripture, the approach of the scriptures. So it does not mean he is against the scriptures, but he wants he wants to specialize or he wants to show a new kind of approach. The matter is same, but he because many people are interested upon some scriptures, the language of the scriptures, they are caught with the idea of these scriptures. They are unable to know the essence of the scriptures. But the essence of the scripture is same, and the essence of the teachings of Buddha is same. In essence, everybody is same. There is no deviation in the essence. But in the external approach, outer orbit, some variation, uh, some, uh, some, uh, because basically there is no division between the uh, teachings of Buddha and the teachings of the scriptures. But in the outwardly, it may against each other. Um, but it looks like that. We are in the, that is only in the outer periphery. In the outer periphery, is, it looks like that. But uh, in, in the under, in underneath everything, the same thing is there. Same approach is there. So, so language is only to communicate something, what is real, what we have to do, that is common to all. So the main problem is that uh, we are suffering because of fighting with ourselves. Uh, so we have to stop the fighting within ourselves. Self-torture, we are torturing ourselves. <laughs> we have to free from the self-torture, that is the main thing. So, indirectly or directly, the aims that we should not struggle within ourselves. We should not fight within ourselves. So, that, that is the main reason behind all the philosophy, all the approaches. In one of the Tirukkurals, it is said torture is the mm -hmm. root cause for all the troubles we are having. Yeah, yeah. Physically, is there any difference between a jnani who has understood himself who is in the flow and the other people who self-torture? So self-torture means they are not having the intention to torture himself. They want to have a good 
good state. So they want to retain some good state. For that they fight with himself. So some they do not know how to behave with himself. So unknowingly he begins to torture himself. Right. But the intention is not is not to torture himself. The intention is to be happy always. But uh, but he takes something in his hand that he wants some he thinks he has some responsibility to do something. Actually, there is no responsibility for himself. The psychological structure must be natural. But we knowingly or unknowingly take the responsibility to separate ourselves psychologically. Right. So uh, the unintentionally but surely the people who do self-torture and then physically if we see if we have some instrument or if we go to a doctor, will they see any difference between this uh, unintentionally but surely doing self-torture people and people who understood themselves? Is there physically any difference? So the person who has understood that means he is, uh, he, uh, he, is uh, he gives total concern, total approval to the natural function of his mind. Something, some good thing may happen, some bad thing may happen, some good emotion may come, some bad emotion may come. So in no way uh, he did not, he will not take any responsibility to solve himself psychologically. So he will have the understanding that no necessary, nothing to correct himself. For example, when you write your name upon the water with some spelling mistake, you need not correct the spelling mistake written in the water. It will be, uh, in the next moment it will not be there. But if you take some responsibility to correct the spelling mistake in the water, uh, you have to correct again and again. It, it, is, it is an endless game. So no, there is no necessity. You can price afresh. Uh, you need not correct anything. So you have to, so no responsibility will correct yourself. So whatever happens will correct itself. has got understanding is that he has understood his, that no responsibility is needed. But the ordinary person thinks he must correct himself. He must uh, place himself in a fixed position. He must be in a position that, that nothing can touch him. So he, he must always in a safety, safe position. So he wants to have the responsibility to keep him in a safe position. Yeah, my question was physically. Mm -hmm. Maybe the doctor tests my heartbeat and my blood pressure and uh, all the qualities of my blood. There, there are so many tests available. If they do, will it be any difference from a man or not? Uh, physically? Yeah, physically. If is the quality of my blood is it not as good as a nyani or my heartbeat or health of my body? But here. Uh, psychological emotion, psychological thinking, thought, everything may have some role upon the physical health of my body. Okay. Uh, but uh, that is not the deciding factor. Right. Uh, sometimes a nyani may have some disease. Okay. So, so when he has some disease, the blood will be like that. Okay. Uh, so it is not necessary that all nyani, all enlightened person we have uh, the perfect same body. Uh, perfect body condition, perfect blood condition. It may be somewhat uh, different position, but if it is related to some psychological emotion is concerned, to that extent it will, uh, it will have some impact upon the blood or something. For example, if he psychologically is okay with everything, so naturally the blood condition may somewhat have a quality of that type. So it may have some representation, it may have some impact upon the blood system. But we cannot directly connect. Uh, if we have the peace of mind, he will not have any disease. <laughs> we cannot think like that. Their death. Even Buddha, even before death, he said, I'm going to enter Parinirvana, I'm going to leave the body. And this is my last advice, be a light unto yourself. So, he even knew when his death is going to come, which I think very rarely we 
and rich people will know. So he has got extra, I mean, very sensitive body consciousness. No, that is known as the extra sensitive perception. Okay. ESP. Right. The ESP is responsible for all those predictions of like this. Okay. He can predict his death or others death or any other future right. happenings, they can predict. Okay. Uh, but in, uh, that, is, uh, that is not related to the enlightenment vibration. Okay. So that is a different skill. It is like a, you can be associated with some special skill. Right. Skill is not uh, related to the enlightenment vibration. Liberation is a natural thing, but uh, skill is a specialized uh, thing. Looks like Buddha had this skill also. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. But it is related to some yogic practice. You may you probably mention this hundred times already, but maybe one hundred and one times. A little distinguishing liberation from enlightenment. Dif difference between difference. enlightenment and then liberation. liberation. And then, many times, <laughs> but one more time. Okay. It's different words. Uh, actually, the liberation is purely, in, uh, the enlightenment is purely intellectual. The intellectual understanding, it has nothing to do with the emotion or anything. So what we have to do, uh, it is only an intellectual decision, intellectual conclusion. We can uh, think, we can measure, we can judge or everything through our intellect. Thereby we intellectually a conclusion that no work is on our part to do anything in the psychological world. So this conclusion is known as enlightenment. Uh, but the, we may have many kind of conclusion. But this kind of conclusion helps liberation. Because liberation is natural. We need not create liberation. The liberation is means liberation means the, uh, the appearance and disappearance of the emotion and uh, the function of mind. It functions naturally. Some emotion comes and disappears, comes and disappears. That is the natural function of the mind. The natural function of the mind is known as liberation. But here, we are disturbing the natural function. We want something, we, we reject something. So there way we enter ourselves within the natural flow of the uh, happening of the mind. So here, the understanding is required. So when we understand like this, no work is there, we have to give total freedom to the natural happening of the mind. So the natural happening of the mind is liberation. But the decision that we have no work, is called understanding or enlightenment. Enlightenment is purely intellectual. Yeah. But the liberation is not intellectual. Liberation is the natural happening. Some emotion may come, some thought may come, <coughs> anything may come in our mind. Any, any function may happen in our mind. So all functioning, happening in a free state, in a free movement, that is known as liberation. So ordinary person disturbs the liberation. But the enlightened person alone will not disturb the liberation because he, he finds no work there. So he simply submits to the natural happening of the mind. So the submission happens. Only because of our understanding, the submission happens to the natural flaws of mind. So the natural flaws of mind, the natural function of our mind is liberation. But the conclusion through our intellectual understanding is known as enlightenment. Yeah. So, so the liberation then happens on its own, right? No. Because you can't do, there's no doer. No doer. So as the person um, perfects the enlightenment, it gets be you know, better and better. Sadhana. Mm -hmm. Sadhana of mm -hmm. allowing to happen. As this gets purer or mm -hmm. better, you know, more perfect, mm -hmm. then that liberation can happen on its own. Uh, but uh, all preparation is only for the beginners. So you can prepare some good emotion. So good emotion is not necessary. Even bad emotion may be necessary. For example, uh, if you have a good emotion, you may have the intention to retain the good emotion. But instead of good emotion, you will, if you have the bad emotion, the natural instinct will be to flow. So the flowing is happens only with related to the bad emotion. 
But no, you know, no, no practice is to create bad emotion. So all practices are aimed for the good emotion. Yeah. But no practice, there is no meditation practice, no meditation technique to create, create bad emotion. Right, right. So all are you know, creating good emotions. Yeah, yeah. So we, actually it is a hindrance because whenever we are having good emotion, we want to retain it. Yes, yes. So the all the effort to retain something is against the natural flow. Yeah. But, but we can practice, I mean, you, if the enlightened person, you can get, it can become more natural, right? Yeah, natural. Exactly. In other words, even if it's under, the understanding is there. Yeah. But you have to, the enlightenment precedes liberation. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can't. Uh, so, so, in other words, allowing the flow yeah. more and more, mm -hmm. so it's more and more and more natural, mm -hmm. then that helps the, towards liberation. Yeah. Everybody, everything, including the doer, including the thinker, yeah, yeah. everybody, everybody is in the flow. He submits, submits to the natural flow of our mind. Yeah, yeah. So before that, we are against the current of the water, against the current of the uh, mind. Yeah. Now we are along, along with the current of the water. Yeah, yeah. So you, we submit to the total current of the uh, mind. helpful when you discuss the dream state because dream state is just mm, yeah, no yeah. good or bad uh -huh. you know good good part of the dream that part is a bad part of it. it's just a just a flow just a flow, flow. but in the, in the waking hours also if you do if you everything is in the natural flow just like a dream in the dream we are not uh, we cannot correct anything yeah. it is just a flow so in this way in the daytime also in the waking hours also if everything is in the natural form, just like a dream, then the uh, liberation in full swing. Liberation is, is in full swing, full flow. Full, full flow. flow. Full flow. Total flow. Mm -hmm. yeah, is uh, enlightenment like opening the window of a dark room. So enlightenment using our intellect, we just open the dark room, the light comes in, then everything is clear, then we don't, no confusion, no effort required. It, it, it was bright only initially, mm -hmm. then using our intellect, we close the window and it becomes dark, then we cry. Then using intellect, if we understand that there is no need to cry just by opening the window. Oh, so we have the light. We have the light. Always. Whether you open or not, you have the light. <laughs> what to do, what not to do. So you have the idea, correct idea, that you, you need not do anything. So you have the light. The light alone is enough. So the opening, uh, you can switch on something light right. or open the window or anything. Right. So uh, the light is there. Then only you can have the understanding. So yeah. understanding can be considered related to the light. So, light means through light you see everything clearly. So, light means always there. So, here the uh, light means understanding your, your responsibility. Whether you have any responsibility to do anything or not is the light for the inside. For the inside. Master says, effort. Yeah, so, we all know Buddha did lots of effort and all those things. But in this scenario, uh, we all believe that we are not enlightened. I believe I am not enlightened. So, there is something called enlightenment is there. So, now we have to put effort. So, the question is, how much, what is effort and how much effort do we put? Our effort is only to go to the effortless state. but. So my question is, should we even put the effort? Because even to come here, we are all have put effort. We have come here, we have planned here, and we have come here, we have put some effort. So we are all putting effort to go to an effortless state. So my question is, how much effort should we put? Like we have to keep putting more and more effort until we understand the effortless state. So here, our, our effort is to understand the role of effort. So if you understand the role of effort, uh, sometimes in the role of effort, the, you know, 
when you understand no effort is necessary to the psychological effort the effort our effort is necessary to do some external things but psychologically no effort is necessary so that extent you have to understand the nature of the effort so the effort you we are we are we are doing some effort to the extent to understand the nature of effort so here uh, understanding alone the given understanding may it come out of some effort without right so your inquiry your inquiry discussing everything is the part of the effort right but the effort ends where we know the role of effort here we understand that no effort is necessary in the psychological world so you have to na- naturally because if you want if you want to swim against the current of the water yeah, there is some effort and force is make required but going along in the flow no effort is needed so you have to stop the effort in along is enough so if you if you keep on going with some effort so it is against the natural flow so here uh, uh, then we are uh, understanding the limitation of the effort if it is related to the psychological world the effort alone is the problem but if related to the external world without effort nothing is possible so when we till the till you reach the understanding uh, this can be considered as the external thing this so it is not a psychological world even though it is the, the matter is psychological your inquiry your thinking your discussion it can be considered as the external activities uh, just like external it is not a internal activity it is can be considered as a external work as just like going to a shop purchasing something then we are discussing with ourselves what is the role of our soul so after that you find out that no work is needed then only the psychological work is going on when the psychological work is going on you are not doing anything for your soul you are not incurring anything for your soul this is why you are submitting your the submission alone is there in the psychological world uh, there is no part of your soul taking the role of your superior thing so there is no role there is no role for your soul as the subject and object so everything is object there is no subject the total mind is an object Not, nothing is a subject but in the external world alone you may take assume yourself to be the subject and the rest of yourself the the world may be the object but within psychological world everything must be happening so all happening uh, when you are doing something the doer must be there so when there is when everything is happening there cannot be a doer in the happening whenever there is a doer it is not a happening it will be a doing so in psychological world is concerned there may everything must be happening there cannot be a doer there should not be a doer so here you say all this effort which we put for the search all on the effort search the work we do whatever technique we use is all i have to consider as i'm doing in the outside world only mm-hmm. but i don't have that understanding that i am now i don't have that understanding my because i don't have the understanding i am thinking if i come here maybe i'll have a good state of mind i want to get the so called enlightenment after which my life will be peaceful so i came here with that intention and i'm putting all my effort with that intention mm. so here uh, this can be considered as a external work it is not a psychological work it is can be considered just like going to a shop and purchase a thing yeah. to come in here and the inquiry what is enlightenment what is liberation this also can be considered as an external work not the psychological work right but when i came here my intention is to correct the psychological world only but till you reach the place reach the point of understanding all work is external it is not internal so when we finish the external work then the psychological work starts in the psychological work there is no necessity then everything is happening even your doubt may be happening your question may be happening your understanding may be happening everything is the happening there is no doing there is no getting something there is no uh, correcting yourself you have to accept everything as a happening there is no most, there is no work on your part you have 
witnessing mm -hmm. the club. So in um, in enlightenment, mm -hmm. if everything is an object, mm -hmm. then the, then you there. I know the story. The you is is an object. Mm -hmm. No, but witnessing is happening. Uh, we can Would take we that say, witness. Can we say that way? Because whenever we uh, project something, it will have some uh, some responsibility to something. So whenever we are giving importance to a certain point of uh, some something, it, it will have some uh, involvement with the happiness. When, so, so when everybody is an object, there is no subject to have, uh, take something as a, a special one, something is uh, one, uh, the other worst one. We need not worry about that. So the relationship, there is no relationship, there is no uh, measurement, this is good, this is bad. Mm -hmm. So whenever there is no measurement, this is good or bad, it is not a witnessing. So we are, when everything is natural, everything is okay, so this approach can be considered as witnessing. Yeah. This, that does not mean one person is standing as a witness and witnessing everything does not mean. So no involvement. Uh, we allow everything as a natural happening. Nobody is taking the role of a doer. Um, or a role of a witness. Uh, I am a witness. Uh -huh. Also no uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Also that's part of it. Yeah, everybody is more flowing. There is no subject, object alone is there. There is yes. no subject. There's nobody there. Nobody there. <laughs> no, no, no. Even though somebody is there, we have to treat him as an object itself. For example, uh, in the dream, you may feel yourself there, you are, you, are, you are there. In the dream itself, each and every portion of the dream, the self-identity will be there. I am there to be doing something in the dream. But actually, he is not away from the dream. He is a part of the dream. So in this way, even though the I am is there, it is the part of the natural flow of the mind. It is not apart from the natural flow of the mind. It is one or even, there is no special role between the, related to the other emotion. We think, the, I, I want to be free from fear or sorrow, that means the I am gets importance. The fear does not get importance. But actually, both are the same. There is no difference between the I am and the fear. There is no difference between the I am and the sorrow. But in the in the dream itself, uh, we may we, we may be afraid of some snake or some uh, some enemy or anybody. So you are somebody, and the enemy or snake is somebody. So here uh, they have some relationship uh, to get rid of some uh, danger. The, but here. Um, in the dream itself, uh, we, uh, the eye consciousness is in its importance, but the, he wants to be free from the fear of a uh, snake or anything. The snake does not get importance. Here, the one is object and one is subject. But, uh, but if you uh, if you consider totally, both are dream. There is no, in, uh, even though it looks like this, the eye consciousness gets importance, and the, and the picture of a snake may be a modern thing, but may think like that. The, he must be, the, the consciousness must be free from the snake. But actually there is no necessity. Everybody here, as, a, as a snake is a picture, the I am is also a picture of the thing. There is no difference between this picture and this picture. But in the, this is the same in the waking hours also. There is no special capacity to the I am. It is also emotion, just like the emotion of the I am, uh, just like the emotion of the fear, I am, and so on. The I consciousness is also a kind of emotion. Everything is the emotion. Mm -hmm. everything, everything is the expression of the mind. Mm -hmm. In some way it is expressed as I am, some way it is expressed as uh, fear. In the same way, it is it expresses itself in the form of I am, I am also. The yeah. me also. The me is also an expression. Mm -hmm. It is also a kind of emotion. But we think the, I want to catch hold of this emotion and uh, deal with the other other emotions. But actually, everything is the object. There is no subject. 
even though it appears to be a subject, it is not a subject. But in the dream itself, the unconscious takes the role of the subject. But it is not a subject. It is also an object of the dream. It is not a subject. So just like that, even now, even in the waking state, the unconsciousness, even though it assumes the role of a subject, it, it still it's an object. Just like the other emotions, just like the other feelings, it is a, it is also a, one of the objects. Mm. So when you talk about the witness of the witness, mm -hmm. then the wit the I am also is also flowing. Right. And then whatever so that's you know, yeah. that's also flowing. So actually witness means, for example, two persons are fighting with each other. And we are witnessing the fight of the persons. Here if you if we are related to any one of the person, we will some way we are other related to the uh, transaction. But if you do not have any personal relationship with any of the fighters, that alone is a state of witness. So witness, he must be a neutral person. You do not have any bias with any person. Mm -hmm. So here, the, when, we do not, when we don't have any bias with anything, so here the role of the I am is not important. The subject, the matter alone is important. So in this way, what is happening gets importance the role I am, I want to be this way, I, I have to be that way. So if you select the happenings in this way or that way, then some personality gets importance. So if you don't mind anything, whatever is happening, then only the, the function of the mind can be uh, tapped as the witnessing is happening. So everything is happening in the form of witnessing. So no, no role of also selecting something, is some involvement. So no involvement is there. As the happening happens without any involvement uh, to separate something this way or that way, then we have some involvement there. So it is against witnessing. So when, you, when everything is uh, happening with total freedom, uh, so that can be considered as a witnessing. Mm -hmm. Everything is um, object only, there is no subject in the inside. Uh, but in the outside, just for the sake of convenience, we say I am the subject. Right? So only, yeah. only for the outside? Outside, uh, we can assume ourselves to be the subject. Okay. So psychologically, everything is object, there is no subject. Even though we assume the role of a subject, uh, naturally it is a, it is object alone, but it uh, assumes the role of the subject. Inside. Inside. But for the outside, I have to say I am the uh, subject. Yeah. It is, okay. it is necessary. Okay. Otherwise we cannot function in the world. Right. So subject-object relationship is a must if you are related to the external world. We have to take some responsibility. We have to take your role, then only we can function. Otherwise, no function is possible. Um, normally, currently, generally, our relationships are to fill up the void which I have. Like, I don't know what to do, then I call up my friend, then we go outside. Uh, I, there are so much types of entertainment and tourism. It's all there. It is all to fill up the void which I have. I don't know what to do. And I believe I'm empty. So to fill it up, I do so many activities. Like, it could be watching TV. It could be going out with friends. It could be movies, all these things. I do because... Uh, I believe that I don't know what to do with my free time. Right? Yeah? So now, if, if I understand that, I mean, in case if, I, if, if a person understands that uh, there is no subject inside, then will all these like relationships like fall off? 
like he's never going to go to he might not go to a movie he might not call up his friends just to kill time and will all those activities which we do just because we are bored uh, will all those activities fall off go away so here so we have to do something in the external world and the external world uh, when we participate in any work it will have create some reaction within ourselves sometimes it may create some good re reaction we are uh, for example you know, whenever you go to a movie or some entertainment you have some relaxation within yourself so it has some it, then may there may you can uh, you can create some re you can recreate yourself sometimes you may feel some recreation that means here you may feel when want a change of the situation so the change of situation means you can have a change of your emotion or psychological structure also so but it is necessary if it is related to the external world we cannot always do the same work again and again so it will become a monotonous so you will have a break you will have a, a change of work change of everything so that is necessary but here so that is related to if you are related to the external world to that extent you may be related in that way to the psychological world also uh, but at the if you the matter is purely psychological how to behave yourself how to keep yourself and that alone is your question then you have to find that no work is there you that means you have to accept yourself totally without uh, any change without any gap this i want this i don't want if you totally accept yourself uh, so the total happening within yourself uh, will happen because the, you, you can understand you can uh, you, you can feel the natural flow of your mind itself so if you understand and if you recognize that natural flowing state of your mind then you with the natural flow of your mind or mind alone the the different kind of work you can in the different way in a different dimension you can participate in the external world also for you for the extra for the beginners it is not necessary but if you understand and if you recognize the natural flow of your mind so so you have changed your psychological structure has changed in a different dimension so in that manner your work will be in a different way so the expectation with related to the external world may be in a different dimension but even in that all time also if you want find want some recreation uh, having some break in the uh, routine work that is also uh, it is not against the liberation uh, so here the main thing you have to understand that psychologically we must be free they psych psychologically we should not uh, uh, this uh, select anything this i must be this i don't want uh, like this so we should not take any shape consciously we have to be as much as possible we, we have to allow the total mind as a natural mind natural happening so when uh, when we allow like this we can uh, we can uh, feel the natural flow of your mind itself so if you are um, just like for example uh, sometimes you are sitting in a train or anything it may slowly move uh, so when you are busy with some work in the train you may not understand the train is moving but if you simply wait and uh, and watch then you slowly you can understand the slow the, the slow uh, moving of the train is so so in this way if you understand the natural flow of your mind in its own way so you can understand the natural flow in state of your mind so if you understand like this that is the that you have understand the uh, flowing of your mind is the flowing of liberation is so it is it is an important part so as you understand that you have no work in the psychological world in the same way you 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 have the feeling that the mind is flowing naturally you will also understand like this then that in that liberated mind you can you can participate in any work of the mind
Keep I for the you that is aware of this natural flowing state of mind. So the mind, mind itself, mind itself is just uh, uh, some thought. You say everything is uh, operating in the form of thought. Right. So some thought, emotion, everything is there. The thought alone is recognizing. Yeah. The thought alone is recognizing. So everything is flowing. This thought alone. Yeah. So in, in that situation, then there's it seems like there's still a division. There's a thought that recognizes the flowing state. So recognizing the when we recognize the flowing state of the mind, recognize the natural flow of the mind, then we can understand that everything is okay. We, right. we can understand, we can come to a conclusion. So everything is okay. So otherwise we are we are applying some break. Right. <laughs> uh, we are trying to catch hold of something. I want this right. thing or that thing. So when we have the natural flow of the mind, we'll have the different. We can understand for ourselves some different kind of functioning is going on there. Right. So I mentioned to you the other day that I'm finding that my mind. Things that used to bother me, I, well, even externally, but my mind, the thoughts and feelings, many of them don't bother me in the same way they used to bother me. And um, that my, they're still there, but they don't have the same sense of solidity to them. They're not so solid. And, and in that, I'm feeling a, a greater sense of stability or peace. Now, what is that sense? Then you said something about that sense of stability the other day, and I forget what it was. But what that sense of stability, it's still a state, or that's, that uh, feeling of stability, is that still a state, or, or what is that sense of stability or quietness that's there, even if my mind is acting up? That's it. So here, when we, when, we are, when we give importance to the flowing along, that and that indirectly means that we are not giving importance to a particular thing. Right. So when we give importance to the peace or not giving importance to some sorrow or suffering, then we are against the flow. Right. So okay. when we are in favor of the flow means, then we are giving uh, equal importance to everything. Uh, in that circumstances, uh, peace and uh, sorrow is same. Uh, if you select peace against the sorrow, then we select something then it gives some disturbance to the natural flow. Right. So here, uh, when we, the, the, uh, we in on our part, the submission alone is our role. Mm -hmm. When we submit our, ourselves mean, we are, we are giving total liberation to the natural happening of everything. Mm -hmm. We are not uh, demanding anything. So when we demand something, we are against the liberation. We are against the freedom. So with our submission alone gives freedom to everything. So, so for you, when there, when there's no, when there's just the flow, mm. it, 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 it just seems that with that, because you're not being involved with that and just uh, not making any distinction and discrimination between between any of the states that arise, that it seems that there would be a greater sense of peace or a greater sense of. Uh, so here, for you, I'm talking about for you. You know that it seems like there must be that. Just a greater sense of peace or something. Oh, maybe peace. Yeah. <laughs> if there is a peace, let it be natural. It seems so, but looking at you. <laughs> you know, being here with you, it seems so. But if, but, if, maybe, if, if peace has happened, let it happen. Okay. But it is not happening only because of our demand. It is, if it is happening, if peace is happening, let it be happening but in a natural way. Okay. Not as a result of a practice or something like no, no, that, but yes. or making some type of no, effort. Yeah. As we said in the other day, for example, if you have fear or anger or sorrow, happens naturally, but at the same time you are creating some peace of mind uh, through the effort. So here, uh, if you say which one is good, whether the fear is good or the uh, peace is good, uh, if you take, if you compare the both, the fear alone is good because it is natural. Right. But the, it is uh, the peace is created. The created is not good. Right. Then that peace is unnatural. <laughs> natural. Yeah, natural. natural. Fear is natural. So mm -hmm. natural happening alone is good. 
So we have to accept what is happening in the natural way. We have to accept the natural law. peaceful and that's what he guesses so <laughs> i have a very maybe uncomfortable question when was the last time you were angry when when was the last time you were angry or when did you get anger previously like did you get anger like last one month so anger may not come but some irritation may come okay <laughs> <laughs> it may, may not be a great anger okay. but some irritation may come <laughs> okay would you like to recall any specific example for any irritation
So the situation may require something from us. So we have to suit with the situation. We have to match with the situation. Yes. But psychologically, whatever happens, some unwanted thing may happen. Some you know, we may some fear may become, some sorrow may come. It may, we don't want the, like this, but it may happen like this. So whatever happens, we have to accept. It is a natural happening. Yes. We should not find fault with anything. It is a natural. Yes. It is a natural of our mind. And in Chennai, uh, the, the, the sentence is very nice, so I am referring. See, he told that uh, sometimes I got anger. So I understood you, uh, elected person will have anger. <laughs> so because I am having anger, <laughs> so I know elected person will also have anger. So that is the statement of himself. Because he has got an anger, he don't uh, find to fall with the anger. He, at the same time, he is not underestimated that he is not uh, enlightened. He, he is fear of his enlightenment. So, he, doubt, he, he did not doubt about him. He, he has not doubt about him. Even though he has got anger, he has not doubt about him. Uh, even enlightened person himself get angry. Uh, so, <coughs> he associates everything with the enlightenment. Nothing is against the enlightenment. Mm -hmm. He is fear about his enlightenment. He had, a, he had a conviction. Conviction. The understanding and conviction. So, that is the So, whatever happens psychologically, we don't find fault with anything. Only everything is natural. The situation may be like that. So, we have naturally, we have some, we, have, we are arranged, our psychological structure is arranged likewise. Thereby, we have some happening happens like this. But if you are totally open, naturally the emotion or anything will have a flow, natural flow. So next moment it will be away from us. A lot of people who talk about happiness, hmm. uh, but uh, are you happy? Uh, well, I'm happy most of the time. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a, a, a 85% of the time I'm happy. Sometimes I'm not so, you know, and they're trying to, you know, control the feeling. But, but they talk about techniques, you know, to mm -hmm. create better feeling. And then as I'm thinking that that's really more external world to a technique or If I think of, if I use this thinking, I feel better. Uh, I'm not so mad or angry about this person. I'm thinking, oh, this person is just doing the best they can. So, so I can't blame the person. So I shouldn't be angry. So I feel better. Mm. But all this is external world, right? Mm. I mean, it's just yeah. techniques, yeah. manipulation. Mm. Not. Yeah. So, the external world is concerned. We have to arrange. We have to. Uh, you know, we have to follow some system. Then only we can avoid some unnecessary friction from the world. So we can arrange like this we, uh, without uh, creating any friction in our soul. But that is only for the external world. Yeah. But at the same time, if, if you have the psychological freedom, so the, our participation to the world will be a different dimension. We will have, we will enter into the world in a different dimension. Mm -hmm. We are entering into the world just like a child. So the child they may have so many emotion or anything for itself, but it will not have any reservation. I must be like that, I should not be like that. So it, it is always free. So in, with the freedom, we are entering into the world. Reacting between the reacting inside based on what is currently happening outside or based on what is ha based on the thoughts like for example before you coming here I saw a spider there then there was a fear in my mind but then if I imagine something else might go wrong in future about my job about my home or whatever there's so many fears but this physic this fear is physical and here now and I react but 
The other fears which I have, it's not here now, it is not physical, it can happen, it might not happen. So from the my body point of view or from my mind point of view, is there any difference between the current physical fear which I have with a spider or a snake or, or precipice or anything and a thought created fear? What's the difference between these two? So basically same. There is same no thing. difference. You, know, you have to take the situation. How to solve the situation? Man, even though it is not imaginary, the real situation may be there. It is, you, are, you may have an insecure job, insecure, uh, some security problem in your living places. Right. You may have taken into account. So, it may, in future it may be you have to face like this. So now you are presently facing like this. So there is no, basically there is no difference. But when you are facing some problem or anything, so you have to behave, you have to deal with that, you have to think for that, you have to find a uh, solution to tackle the situation and to meet the situation in a successful way. So your, uh, your reaction is to handle the situation in a successful way. That is the thing you have to do. So, so here, you are not questioning. Uh, you have some reaction with your know, Whenever you are facing a situation, whenever you are thinking some situation, you have some unnecessary emotion within your mind. So you are not questioning whether you have to be free from the unnecessary emotion. You are not, that is not your question. So if that is your question, then you are against yourself, not against the situation. So you may be against the situation, but you should not be against yourself. That is difference. But I, yeah, like let us say I, I have a real insecurity, like I got a big loss in my business, right? Like millions of rupees, big loss. Now to pay that back, let's assume I might have to work hard for the next five years. Like it's a big loss and now I don't have money and I got a big loan. Now I have to pay back, I have to work for like five years. Now this is a scary situation. Now I fear, oh, I have to work for five years to pay back all this money and I'm sad. And then I should start working and all those things. So now I don't like that situation where I am in. If I assume this, then I got fear. So now you would say this fear or unhappiness will push me to work harder for the next five years to pay that back. So you are again your reaction to the situation is good. You can take it as an inducement to work hard to meet the situation. So, uh, you have to, I, there is no harm in afraiding of the situation. You have to afraid of the situation. Then only you can make the situation correct. But you should, at the same time, you should not afraid of your fear. You, the fear is a natural. You have to accept your psychological reaction as a natural thing. You should not fight with your soul. You should not be afraid of yourself, but you may be afraid of the external things. Then mm -hmm. only you can uh, set it the external world in a correct way. Right. But if you are afraid of yourself, then you, <laughs> your struggle is reward for struggling within yourself, not struggling with the world. You can struggle, you may struggle with the world, but don't struggle with yourself. So, for the next, uh, all these years, even if I'm sad, if I'm unhappy, if I cry also, I have to work hard. Cry, be sad, pay the money every year. If unhappiness comes, if I'm sad, thinking my situation, I should be unhappy, work hard, pay the money until I keep <coughs> working hard and have emotion until everything is paid back, is it? So here, the ordinary person is concerned, he. So some unwanted emotion may come like this, and he will also use the emotion to separate the things. But apart from that, he wants to be free psychologically. He will, he will struggle with himself also. He wants to be in a good state. He, he, wants, to, he, he wants to keep himself without any agony. But he will not be open-hearted with his agony. He is uh, not open to his agony. But the liberated person alone will wholeheartedly accept the natural happening of his mind. And work, so hard for, and work hard for five years and pay back all the money. So that, no, no, no. 
over here. If you go over here, the, the agony will be there. It may be related to the, it is related to the external world. So the external world may have a uh, adverse situation. The adverse happening will come within our mind. Some fear or sorrow, some agony, some tension, everything may come. But don't find fault with the agony. Don't find fault with the tension. So uh, here you are, you are giving total freedom to the uh, psychology is happening, but at the same time, but you make use of the uh, thing to the external world, make use of the tension, make use of the agony to deal with the situation. And do all the actions required. Yeah. Very good. Of the happening. So here, 
the body expression, the psychological expression must be given total freedom to the appearance and disappearance. That is the main uh, meaning behind all those things. But, but to many people, instead of dismissing the ha natural happening of the mind and body, they are seeking something more than that and uh, seeking towards the real source <laughs> that is meaningless. Now, which is uh, seeking the source? The mind itself alone is the seeking the source. In the name of reality, we are giving importance to the mind. We are giving a role to the mind to seek some, uh, something else. But, <laughs> but instead of that, if you are dismissing the role of the mind itself, then no seeking is necessary. So the dismissing the happening alone is necessary. What is happening? We have to go along with that. Hey, then we don't find fault with anything. What, everything is the happening of the mind. Everything is the happening of the maya or anything. We are giving, we are dismissing the natural happening of everything. The mind only knows the language of the doing. They say, don't look here and here. It will say, okay, then I should look somewhere else. <laughs> so it has to look, it has to do, it, is, it needs to have a target, it has to achieve something. As you frequently say, it only knows the language of the achievement. It doesn't know. Yeah. But the language of achievement is necessary in the external world. Okay. But that alone is the destructive factor in the psychological world. Generally, in the spiritual world, they say materialism is not a good thing. So, so shun from all the materialism, material, don't use material, make yourself, I mean, don't make yourself even comfortable, try to live a real hard life. Like, have bare minimal necessities, just have food, basic food, basic clothing, basic shelter, whatever is just sufficient for survival. So this is what most of the old spiritual masters uh, has suggested. But uh, you don't subscribe to that point of view. So, so the material world is common to all. But uh, the liberation is, uh, we are aware, of many people are unaware of the liberation. The psychological liberation, comparing with the material world, the liberation is the highest thing. But uh, it is a basic need. Uh, when we get the liberation, but at the same time, uh, we cannot dismiss the material world. Material world is there. We have to do the necessary work. Uh, but some as we, we, comparing with the, uh, this ordinary way of living, <coughs> the liberated mind is the important one. So, give, so saying, giving some uh, importance to the uh, thing, they are, for the time being, they are dismissing the material world. So actually, that way we are, so as, just like for a preparation, they are using the word that it is not important, material world is not important. But if you are permanently criticizing the material world, that is meaningless. Uh, the real world, but you have to understand the liberation, enlightenment, that is important. But after getting the enlightenment liberation, actually no psychological world is there because you need not worry about the psychological world itself. After all, you have to worry about the external world alone. The external world is the real world. The material world alone is the real world. You have to give as much importance as possible. You have to give total importance to the material world. But, this, but there must be some order. In order in the material world, we have to give importance to the material world. But uh, for the time being, we have to give importance to the psychological world. And uh, it is temporary one. Yeah. But uh, as they do not uh, get the clear cut view of the psychological world, they are taking more time. Thereby, they are dismissing the uh, uh, material world forever. That is not necessary. For the time being, you can uh, give importance to the material psychological world and uh, no, not giving importance to the material world. But it is not a permanent one. But like 
Because who sure Rajneesh, at one time he had 100 Rolls Royce cars and he had his own aeroplane. He has got his, like hundreds of acres in US and many other places. So he was a very very rich guru. So like should also somebody accumulate so much wealth? But as putting, he does not need anything for like that. That is different. His lifestyle may be like like this. But as a common man, as an ordinary man, he can live in this world. He need not be a, a guru or anything. Uh, but the role of a guru is only for the teaching. Uh, it is not for the living of some comfortable life. So uh, minimum comfort is my enough. Not uh, huge. But as a uh, as a one person among the society, we can be rich. So you can share in the richness. They then give you employment to many people. So it is uh, one among the many people. We can be rich, and thereby you can make use of the richness and, uh, and wealth and to share, to do some work in the world. But uh, it related to the uh, role of some guru, some little amount of wealth is enough. So teach, for that to teach something, you have to communicate some teaching. For that, some minimum requirement of wealth is enough. Not to huge wealth is not necessary. So communication is not for himself. He must have a comfortable life. That for that on single rose size, rose size, you know, <laughs> under rose size class is not you know not necessary. But his life lifestyle life may be like this. Good to our thing, good to our, uh, for our 
good thing for, for according to our expectation, we love him. So somebody is doing some bad thing against ourselves, we are hating him. So our love is a conditional one. So when we are, when somebody is doing good towards ourselves, then only we are loving him, loving him means our love is conditional. So it is related to that, doing good and bad by the other people. So if we love, whether they will do good or bad, if we love them both in an equal way, then only their love is a total. So here, the accepting other people, whether they, they are doing good or bad, that means we are giving total freedom to the action of the other people. So here, the love, the real love, the total love, the absolute love means the freedom. So when we are giving total freedom to everybody, that is the sign of love. So here, for example, when we are giving total freedom to our child, children, because we are love them very much and we are giving total freedom to their, their, their activities. But at the same time, our little boy is breaking the some some glass bureau or anything, though we won't allow. <laughs> so even though we are giving total freedom to him, we are loving him, we won't allow him to do some bad thing. So in this way, controlling the other person to not to do some bad thing, it is for the good for everybody, not for himself or for myself. But psychologically we are giving freedom to everything. But the psych Giving freedom does not mean a physical allowing, not, does, does not allow the physical activities. So psychological we have to give freedom to psychological work. So psychological we have to give freedom to everybody, everything. But physically we will be controlled, we can have some control mm -hmm. with that thing. But the psychological we may give freedom to everybody. Uh, as we are restricting to our boy not to break the uh, Glass bureau. That does not mean we are against him. We are we are not giving freedom to him. So psychological worry giving freedom. But so psychologically we must be free. That means psychologically we have to accept. We have to accept whatever is happening. But physically we need not accept. Physically we may correct. The physical activities we may correct. But we can accept everything in the psychological way. That we have to understand. I did not, sorry, it's not very clear to me yet. So, what do you mean by giving psychological freedom to them? So here, when your boy is breaking the door, right. that does not mean you are hating him. So you are, you are hating the activities alone, you are not hating the boy. So, so that is why I am using the word of your son, the boy. Mm -hmm. But if you take the example of some other person, we, may, we cannot understand. So if you relate to your child, even though he does say, did a bad thing, we won't hate him. But at the same time, we have to correct his action. We are, we are, we are against his action, but not to we are against him. Uh, whatever he, if he, if he does the good thing or bad thing, we love him. In spite of his good and bad, we love him. So that is why psychologically our approach towards him is psychological. But it does not mean that we are not giving concern to the wrongdoing. So even though we are not giving concern to the wrongdoing, we are psychologically accept, uh, accept himself. So that is the, so in this way, as you accept your son psychologically, so you have to accept everybody as psychologically. The relationship is there. So, you are not breaking the relationship. So, you are having the relationship. You are psychologically, you are related to everybody. You are not breaking the relationship. Psychologically, even though he is breaking the door or anything, you are not, bre you are not breaking the relationship between you and the son. Uh, but at the same time, you can correct the action. But the correcting the action does not mean that you are uh, disturbing, is, uh, disturbing the freedom. So, but the, the, the psychologically, you are related means 
whether you do you whether you do, did you a wrong thing or whether you did a right thing, in spite of your wrong doing, I love you. So that is a psychological uh, relationship. But at the same time, I won't allow the wrong doing. So that's a different thing. Does it mean that like I don't have any expectation from him? So psychological expectation means if I, if you do a wrong thing, I won't love you means that is the psychological involvement. Right. So the love should not have any uh, condition. The, the love must be unconditional. Whether you did you do a right thing or wrong thing, I will love you. In spite of your doing good thing or bad thing, I will love you. There will not be any uh, disconnection between you and our, there will, our relationship will not be disturbed. Whether you do a right thing or wrong thing, our relationship will not be disturbed. So in that way, our love, love is unconditional. But at the same time, it does not mean that we will not uh, keep myself calm even though when he is uh, breaking the door, breaking the window or anything, that does not mean. We can correct. But instead of correcting this thing, we can love him, we can... Uh, that means uh, psychologically we have the law. But, but uh, yeah, you say love is unconditional. Yeah, one minute. Yeah. One minute, 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 demands the parents. So I'm not saying much unconditional love in any of these relationships. There's always conditions attached. So is the whole of society doesn't have any sort of unconditional love then? Is everything because so, what we are having is more, mostly conditional love. So we have to we have to know is there any unconditional love? We have to encourage we are inquiring, just inquiring, is there any possibility of unconditional love? So here, only in the case of our little boy alone, we can have some unconditional love. That alone we can have some, because we are not expecting anything. We are, we give, we are giving total freedom to the happening, uh, doing of anything. So even though, even though he does a wrong thing, in spite of his wrong uh, doing, we love him. So, in that position, we are we related to that person alone, we are having some unconditional love. But we are not having this kind of unconditional love to other persons. Right. So, we, we, just as an example, we can know the quality of the unconditional love. But, it, but we are nowhere, we, we cannot, but here the main thing is that from that we have to understand that 
Giving freedom alone is the unconditional love. So that alone we have to understand. I'm not expecting anything. Are you expecting anything psychologically? But physically we are expecting something from the little boy, we are expecting something physically. He should not do anything uh, against the disturbing the he is, he, I don't know, we are not expecting we are expecting that he should not break the door or anything. We are expecting something. But in spite of this expectation, we are not psychologically we are not expecting anything. So we have to understand the difference between the physical expectation and psychological expectation. Psychologically, we are, we are loving him, whether he does the right thing or wrong thing, in spite of his doing like good and bad, we are loving him. So this is the total love. So that is an example of a total love. For this total love, we cannot find somewhere else. For that, uh, with related to our children alone, we can have the unconditional love. Uh, so, to go back to this question, uh, is what Buddha had for to all his disciples an unconditional love? So if you have, that means what we are doing is we are giving total freedom to the son. So in this way if you are giving total freedom to everybody then we are in the unconditional love. That, that is possible only psychologically. So, so Buddha did not expect anything from any of those disciples? Then psychologically. Yes, not physically. Okay, okay, right. Physically, maybe he said, follow all these principles uh, for your good. Unconditional love. To everybody, I mean. Everybody, everybody can be in the unconditional state of love because we are not expecting anything. Because whatever happens, let it happen. We are giving total, as you giving total freedom to yourself, that means that it directly means that you are giving total freedom to everything. Right. But, but uh, yeah, in the societal definition, more love means giving more. When you give more to the wife, wife thinks there's more love. So that is business. <laughs> <It> is business. <laughs> business transaction is not love. So, in the absolute point of view, giving total freedom alone is the love. But the, the, it is a conditional law, all business. <laughs> <laughs> giving and getting something in return for that, we are giving, and in return for that, we are getting something. So that is the, uh, all transaction is a conditional law. Including God then, because we always ask God, God, give me this, I'll give you this. I'll come to your temple, I'll pray for you two hours every day, I'll pray for you, then you give me this. So even that becomes business. So we are, we are measuring everything through our uh, standard. <laughs> we, are, we are measuring even God itself on our measurement. <laughs> In our yardstick alone, we are measuring. But our yardstick is conditional love. <laughs> And conditioned love is also based on materialism. Like, I'll give you this, I'll give you this. I'll give you this material, you give me that material. Anybody 
you know, whatever we feel, everything is object. We cannot feel the subject. Um, but we think somebody is there, somebody is uh, correcting everything, somebody is shaping everything, somebody, somebody is want to remove something, somebody want to retain something. That way we are taking, uh, giving some role that I am, that I come to Actually, whatever we know, we feel, everything is sub object or there is no subject. So there is no necessity to be free from the mamaha. There is no necessity to be free from the emotion. So uh, whenever we are trying to free something, that way along we are uh, creating some subject uh, out of the emotion itself, out of the object alone. But really there is no subject. Object alone is there. Mamaha alone is there. So trying to be free only creates complications inside. Oh, inside. Whenever we want to be free something, the person we want to be free gets something. <laughs> this is like uh, the quick sand to the manal. Mm -hmm. This is like quick sand to the manal. Whatever effort you do, it won't take you inside. <laughs> 